Yo guys, what is up? It is Nick. We are back. We took a little bit of a hiatus from uh, doing this tournament thing every year, but we're back. Gonna get this hammered out. Um, and I produce multiple videos on it. Uh, this is just my initial thoughts. Um, I still have some research to do on the uh, some of the mid majors and the lower seeds that I haven't got to see as much. Uh, so I have to do some more of that type of research. And so. We'll get interesting a little bit on that once I get into that a little bit more and break it down. I don't know a whole lot about most of these teams. Um, usually I have a little bit more knowledge about um, the the uh, the mid-majors, but there were a lot of upsets, um, not expected teams in the tournament like Davidson. And so I don't have like any research done on Davidson because I didn't expect them to make the tournament. Um, there was a couple of other teams... Uh, that made it that weren't supposed to. Um, I don't know. It doesn't really doesn't really matter. Um, but there were some other teams that made it that uh, weren't the expected mid major team to make it. So let's get into this. Um, we'll start out with the uh, with the South Region. Pretty straightforward. We'll take Virginia. Um, in the past years, I haven't liked them as much, and I've been correct in the fact that you, you have to actually score if you're Virginia to win games, um, and it's just something they didn't do. And so, like, a couple of years ago, when I picked Syracuse in the Final Four um, uh, to beat them to make it to the Final Four, my reasoning behind that was the year they had Michael Carter-Williams, um, and uh, what was the guy's name? Um, I forget his name, but... It was that year, the year that it was the Michigan-Louisville National Championship, but um, I, I thought that Syracuse could score enough points and play enough defense that Virginia would just get outscored, but this year they're actually able to score, uh, so I do like them fairly a lot more this year. Uh, in the Creighton-Kansas State game, um, I like uh, uh, Brown and Wade to get it done uh, for Kansas State and take the win over Creighton. Uh, moving on to Kentucky and Davidson, this is one of those that I'm going to have to dig into uh, with Davidson, um, I'm not sure if they're a, uh, my, my real thing is how, I guess, do they, do they have the possibility to get hot from three? Um, you're going to have to, you're going to have to hit some threes against Kentucky to beat them since they started playing defense. Uh, it's a little bit harder, so I'll do more research into that. I do like how their points per game is in the mid seventies. Um, they do play a fair amount of defense, um, holding opponents under, uh, 70, but, I would think they'll have to, um, they'll have to get to the seventy-six points at least to beat Kentucky, um, and that may be enough. Kentucky's a little bit, um, what am I trying to say? Is a little bit uh, off on their shot. Um, I think Davidson might be able to hand it to them. Um, they don't have any quality wins. I guess you can count Sam Bonaventure because they're in the tournament. But I don't really count that. Um, not a great showing against Virginia, decent showing against, uh, North Carolina, decent showing against Nevada, um, New Mexico State is a tournament team, but I don't really take that into account. So, for now, we will take Kentucky, um, won't be too many upsets here, there's a couple that I have my eyes on, but, um, Davidson is one of those, um, Kentucky's been playing a lot better, but I still think they have some recognizable weaknesses, um, that just, the teams in the SEC just didn't take advantage of in the tournaments, uh, and so, moving on, I uh, like Arizona, I like uh, Aiton and Trier to get it done uh, against Buffalo. Um, actually have a friend who goes to Buffalo, but I'm uh, going to take Arizona in a pretty pretty convincing game right there. Uh, moving on down to the bottom half of the South bracket, we've got Miami. Um, was not very impressed with Miami's performances these last... Um, if you take out the chunk where they won a bunch to really solidify where they were they were kind of all over the place um six seed seems about right i, I kind of expected them to be maybe a five but a six is appropriate to me in my mind um i know nothing about loyola illinois um it's really loyola chicago i believe not loyola illinois but um they play some decent defense uh, in their conference, held opponents uh, to 10 points below them, winning on average. Um, they didn't really play any competition. They upset Florida early in the year when Florida was, like, jacking her. I don't know what Florida was doing. They had some ugly 
weird games out of Florida earlier in the year. Uh, and I'll talk about Florida later, but I'm going to go ahead and take Miami. Not really my favorite. Um, moving on to Tennessee and Wright State. I'm going to go ahead and take Tennessee. I like Jordan Bone. Um, he had a really bad game today against Kentucky. Uh, I believe he started out 0-4 in the first like 30 minutes of the game. Um, and I'm not even sure if he's... He, he, I think he made a couple of baskets uh, down the stretch, but nothing too special. I think he gets a turnaround for the tournament uh, and... and uh, Tennessee takes care of business. Moving on to Nevada and Texas, I'm going to go ahead and take um, Texas kind of probably a little bit of a toss-up game. These 7-10s, I think the 7-10s more than the 8-9s for me are actually more of the toss-up if you uh, take a look at the 7-10s compared to the 8-9s. In my opinion, the 7-10s end up being a little bit more of the toss-up. But moving on, we'll go ahead and take the Bearcats of Cincinnati. Was not too impressed today with their showing against Houston. Maybe more saying more for Houston than it is a negative against Cincinnati. But Houston played very well. If it wasn't for a dumb foul and then an awful pass, they probably could have. They probably should have won that game. They would have had. They would have had to make the stop. Then you go to overtime. Or, um, if you may, if you make a better pass there, he's going to have a wide open three. So. Wasn't too thoroughly impressed with Cincinnati, but I do like them. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the West bracket to the number four overall, number one seed, and the Xavier Musketeers. Um, they had that bad blow uh, lead against Providence. Um, wasn't too much concerned with that. Um, I was kind of concerned they'd fall to the two line, but I think the loss to, for, for, by Duke to North Carolina uh, solidified them as a one seed. Uh and so I like them, obviously, to beat the play-in game. I don't even think they have play in, They don't even have the play-in games on here. Um, it's it's UCLA St. Bonaventure that comes in here at the Florida game. Uh, Villanova gets uh, uh, Xavier gets the Texas Southern NC Central, I think. And then here, let me pull it up. Let me pull it up. This is. This is medium important for this. I didn't actually should I had these memorized, but let's just take a look real quick. We can get this taken care of. Okay, they're not actually up yet. Okay. Let me pull up Twitter real quick and we can get these hammered out and know which ones go where. It's medium important. Okay, here we go. Okay, so yeah, so I was right. NC Central, Texas Southern. Um, okay, Villanova gets LIU, Brooklyn, or Radford. And then uh, Arizona State, Syracuse is the TCU one. Okay, we're good. We can continue. All right, so Missouri or Florida State. I'm going to take Florida State. I don't like uh, the fact that uh, Missouri is trying to reintroduce Michael Porter Jr. If I get word that Michael Porter is going to play 30 minutes and they've integrated better than him chucking 17 shots i mean they were plus nine with him on the court so if i get word that he's playing 30 minutes even if they haven't exactly figured it out i will probably take missouri over florida state uh but for now uh, i'm gonna stick with florida state moving on to ohio state and san diego state uh the buckeyes coming off that bad loss to penn state in the big 10 tournament take on san diego state don't know a whole lot about san diego state they're a high scoring team um and this is actually a closer game for them than it is for Ohio State. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean it's like a home game or anything, uh, but not too bad of a draw for San Diego State. And uh, this is kind of the four or five that I didn't want to end up with. Um, I kind of wanted where the four or five. So okay, I, I kind of actually that's fine. I kind of wished Kentucky would have gotten. Gonzaga and Arizona would have gotten Ohio State would have made it much easier for me but I am actually going to go ahead and take the upset here in San Diego State um it's going to be one of the few upsets I take early here um not probably will flip back on it but I do I do obviously know this year in particular we're going to get upsets and so We'll go ahead and in the initial bracket we'll take San Diego State we'll take Gonzaga I do like uh UNC uh Greenboro um not not my favorite 13 um I think my favorite 13 is probably is probably Marshall 
if I look at them. Um, if it was Marshall, I'd probably take them when we get that 12-13. Always an interesting thing when that happens. Uh, kind of a cakewalk for the one seed if those upsets happen, um, but not going to take it here. San Diego State-Houston is an interesting game, uh, but I do like Houston to come out of that. I liked how they played today, like I said. Um, I think if they uh, played that a little bit better down the stretch, they walk away pretty easily with a win. Uh, moving on to the Big Ten champs who have been off for a week. They'll be off for a total of nine or ten days or no wait 10 or 11 days sorry they'll be off for 10 or 11 days depending on when they play um actually it'll be more than that 12 or th they finished on 12 or 13 is it 12 or it's 11 or 12 something like that days depending on what day they play but uh beeline should have uh michigan ready to go uh, and i think they take care of montana uh, one of the better four draw, four, 14 draws. I don't like Bucknell. I wouldn't have liked Bucknell. Um, you get in a firefight with Bucknell, that's never a good thing. Um, and then the other 14, Stephen F. Austin has the experience. Um, not the coach that led them a few years ago uh, with, what was it, Thomas Walkup, but um, still a, a school with a little bit of a tournament experience and upset experience. Uh, moving on to Texas A&M and Providence, I like... I like what uh, I saw out of Providence against um, Villanova. So I'm going to take Ed Cooley's Providence to take down Texas A&M. And then pretty easy, Lipscomb, I believe, making their first tournament appearance. Uh, but we're going to take the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Uh, moving on to the number two overall seed, uh, the Villanova Wildcats in the East. Like I said, they'll get LIU, Brooklyn, or Radford. We'll take Villanova. Not, no need to really break that down. Uh, Alabama and Virginia Tech. I like Alabama. Um, they had that rough game against Kentucky uh, where Colin Sexton had a pretty bad first half. They got they dug themselves a hole and then just couldn't dig out of it. Um, I think Sexton gets it going against Virginia Tech, and I think Alabama advances to play Villanova. Uh, West Virginia, Murray State. Um, this is West Virginia's kind of last go of it. Um, Javon Carter and Dexter Miles. This is kind of it for them. Uh, so I think they give it. They I think they give it a real run this year. They've had some struggles. They got upset by Stephen F. Austin, um, the, uh, which I was talking about earlier. And the Thomas walk up. They got upset by them. Um, I don't. I think they take down Murray State. This isn't the Murray State last year that should have been in the tournament and then choked. Um, it's a little bit worse of a Murray State team, and it's not the Murray State team that had uh, that had campaign on it. Um, and so I think West Virginia's press gets it done. Uh, and I think I, I really do like this Marshall team. I'll have to do some more research into it, but I'm going to take Marshall. Um, I would have West Virginia beating, which uh, just, just to explain this, sometimes I pick upsets just simply based on the fact that I'm going to have this team win anyway. So it's just a simple one, one win, one loss kind of picking them. So I do like Marshall to get it done against Wichita State. Um, mostly partially I think it's like 55% I think Wichita 45 Marshall but because I'm going to have West Virginia advancing anyway I, I think it's worth the risk uh, moving on we get Florida facing St. Bonaventure or who was it St. Bonaventure or someone who was it St. Bonaventure or UCLA um, I don't think it's a great matchup for St. Bonaventure or UCLA against Florida I like Chris Chioza uh, against Aaron ha that would be a good game uh, I do hope UCLA which is weird because I normally would want St. Bonaventure to win uh, I, I enjoy watching the Bonnies play but I would like to see the matchup of Chris Chioza versus um, uh, Aaron Holiday um, I was hoping Florida would grab a five seed and maybe get um, who would they have knocked to a six seed probably would have knocked um West Virginia or Clemson to a 16 maybe or Kentucky but Kentucky won I don't know who they would have knocked to a 16 they were a five seed before they choked in the SEC tournament I was hoping they could they would be a five seed because then they wouldn't have to face Texas Tech who's a three seed only because um Evans was hurt um and so I, I they, they really struggled down the stretch I believe they lost four or five games with him out uh, they had that four-game losing streak, and so I think they take it care of business against Stephen F. Austin. And if you can't tell, I do really like them. This is interesting in the fact that uh, Arkansas and Butler, I think Arkansas presents Purdue with the biggest issues, and Butler just got straight waxed by Villanova. They just looked awful um, in that rematch against Villanova after they had upset them. Um, I'm going to take Arkansas. I do think Butler holds a really good chance, and then 
I don't think Cal State Fulton is going to beat Purdue. Um, this could be a year, though, that a 15 seed gives the two a run for their money, a la Stephen F. Aust- or, uh, Florida Gulf Coast. Um, what was Stephen F. Aust- Stephen F. Austin was a 14 when they beat the West Virginia, I think. I think they were a 14. Uh, so that's really interesting. I forgot about that. So another interesting, another Stephen F. Austin at a 14 seed. They were a 12 seed the other year, and they just sucked it up. But let's move on to the third overall number one seed in the Midwest region. That is Kansas. Take them over Penn. Um, Penn with the better record, but Harvard was the favorite. So that was kind of an interesting little thing today. I like Seton Hall to get it done against NC State. Um, don't know. I, I know a lot more about Seton Hall from watching a lot of B, Big East basketball, but I don't know a whole lot about NC State. I do like Seton Hall from what I know about NC State. I do like Seton Hall to beat them. Moving on to Clemson against uh, New Mexico State. I like Clemson to get it done. Uh, and same with Auburn against Coastal Carroll. Or Char- College of Charleston. Sorry. Char- College of Charleston. Um, I like I like the 4-5 or five to get it done there. Moving on, uh, we have the Syracuse-Arizona State winner to face TCU. I like Jamie Dixon's squad to get it done, even though they don't have uh, the point guard. I forget his name. They don't have him... Um, which is a big reason they've kind of slipped down the stretch, but I still think they, they're they good enough to get it done. Bucknell, interesting squad to try to get it done against Michigan State. They're a little bit lower scoring of a team um, than some of those high-flying three-point shooting squads of the past, uh, but I do believe they still shoot the three-point extremely well, um, and we don't really exactly know how good Michigan State is. Uh, we know they're a pretty good team, but how good we don't really know because they only had to play Purdue once. They only played Michigan once. They only played Ohio State once. They got beat by Michigan both times. Didn't make it far in their conference tournament. Um, they they played a a weird out of conference schedule. It was good. It was ranked good, but it had some easy. It, it was just kind of a weird thing. So I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with Michigan State. Moving on, Rhode Island against Oklahoma. I'm going to take the upset. Most people are going to be all over Rhode Island in this matchup against the sputtering Sooners. But I'm going to go ahead and take Oklahoma, which sets them up with a really intriguing matchup against Duke. Um, Trey Young versus Grayson Allen and Marvin Bagley. And I, 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 I'm interested to see. I want to see that game just because I want to see who they put on. Trey Young. I would assume they'll put Gary Trent or Wendell Carter, maybe. I don't know who they would put on Trey. They're not going to put Grayson Allen on Trey Young. Um, so I'm not exactly sure where they will go there. But let's move on to narrowing this down to the Sweet 16. Well, I do think uh, Dean Wade and um, Bobby Brown give Virginia all they can handle. I think Virginia comes out on top. I like Arizona to dispatch Kentucky fairly easily. I think Alonzo Cheer and DeAndre Ayton are uh, way too much for Kentucky, and I think they take care of business there. Uh, Miami against Tennessee, like I said, I'm like i I'm not too impressed with Miami. Um, I, I, even though Jim Laranega is one of my favorite NCAA coaches, but I think Tennessee and Rick Barnes, Rick Barnes has done a really good job at Tennessee. I believe they were picked 13th in the conference to begin the year, um, and he has just done an, a magnificent job this year. Texas-Cincinnati, I think Mo Bamba can give Cincinnati a lot of issues, but I think Cincinnati uh, gets it done. So pretty chalk it up, chalk um, one through four seeds in the South region, but it's really hard to pick Miami to beat Tennessee. It's really hard to, it's not hard to pick Kentucky to beat Arizona, but I just think Arizona's the better team. I think they take care of business. Uh, moving on to the West, we got Xavier beating Florida State. No real issues there. We're going to have Gonzaga moving on. Even though I don't, th- I don't like Gonzaga as a Sweet 16 team, um, they just got an easier draw. I don't like Ohio State as a five. If they would have gotten the draw of Arizona or Kentucky or West Virginia, I would not have them making it here. But they got an easier draw, so they're making the Sweet 16. Houston-Michigan should be a fantastic game. Should be a highlight game on Saturday or Sunday whenever they play it. Uh, I think Michigan gets it done, but that should be an incredible game. Uh, moving on, I think North Carolina dispatches Providence fairly easy. Um I think Providence benefited from seeing Villanova so much that I, I think that's why they kept it close against the top team and ultimately beat, and beat Xavier two one seeds. Obviously, they have the they have the talent to beat a one seed or two seed, but um, I don't know. I think they benefited a lot from seeing Villanova and Xavier a lot. Moving on, 
to the East region. Uh, Alabama is one of those teams. Um, if you did not know, Villanova is my favorite college team. Um, Alabama is one of those teams that can give Villanova a lot, a lot of issues. Um, you saw it with North Carolina State. You've seen it with, uh, who are some of the, these other teams? UConn. They've always had guards that could take advantage of Villanova, get break their pseudo three-quarters court press, and just make them pay. And I'm assuming Villanova will back it off against Colin Sexton, but this is one of those matchups that I don't like. Um, it's one of those rougher matchups, but I don't. I I think that I think Alabama is not as good as those NC State, uh, UConn teams. So I think they take care of business, get it done. Uh, West Virginia, I have beating Marshall, uh, in relatively easy fashion. Texas Tech, like I've already said, I really do like them in this tournament. Uh, and then Arkansas Purdue, really interesting game. I think Arkansas can give Purdue a lot of trouble, but I think Purdue squeaks it out and. We pretty much held chalk. It'll get a little bit unchalky here, I promise. It'll get a little, little unchalky as we go. But we move down here. We'll get Kansas. And then this is a really tough game for me. I'm not in love with either of these teams, neither Clemson or Auburn. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and take um We're gonna go ahead and take Clemson. We're gonna take Clemson uh, to get it done against Auburn. Um, need to do more research into that. Uh, this is another game I don't really love. I think TCU has the ability to upset Michigan State, but I don't think they do it. And I think Duke dispatches Trey Young in Oklahoma fairly easily. So we held pretty chalk through it. We got a couple of five seats through, but nothing too crazy. Um, so we'll go ahead and get back into this. Here's my first main upset. I think Alonzo Trier and DeAndre Ayton get it done. Beat Virginia. Even though I really do like Virginia this year, I really like Arizona. Arizona's like Texas Tech. I really like them. Uh, and so I think Arizona makes it to the uh, Elite Eight to face Cincinnati. I do like Jordan Bone, and I like I like what Rick Barnes is doing there in Tennessee, but I think Cincinnati just, Mick Cronin, Cincinnati just a little bit too much. Um, Mick Cronin has been in the NCAA tournament seven straight years, which is just like him, Krzyzewski, um, Williams, Self, uh, there's a couple of, Mark Few, I think there's another coach, and Mick Cronin's the only one that hasn't made it to the Final Four, so he's got a chance this year. Um, I did like his, uh, I did like his chances last year with Troy Copain, but they kind of sputtered and then got ousted. Uh, moving on, Xavier Gonzaga. Like I said, I don't really love Gonzaga, so we're gonna take Xavier. Uh, Michigan, North Carolina should be a really fantastic game, and I really honestly think whoever wins this game goes to the Final Four. Um, I think they'll whichever team wins this game should beat Xavier. My my lean, my slight lean is Michigan. Uh, just the slightest of leans is to Michigan. I think North Carolina is the safer pick overall. I think I think it's safer to take North Carolina. I mean, it's just it's the pretty safe, chalky, chalk it up, safe, whatever you want to say. Uh, we'll go ahead and take Michigan in the initial one here. I do really like this draw for Michigan. They don't get any crazy teams. And Michigan gets to, I believe, get revenge. Uh, yeah, they lost by 15 to North Carolina earlier in the year when they were trying to find themselves. And so we'll see how, we'll see if they can get their all, their revenge. We'll go ahead and take Michigan. And then, like I said, we'll be taking them there. But I like Duke to get it done, and I like Kansas. So that's our, what is that? Is that our only 1-2 matchup? Yeah, it'll be our only one-two matchup. Um, I went out of order here, but Kansas Duke in the in the uh, Midwest region uh, to face off, and then we have uh, the East region. We've got Villanova. I think Villanova's guards Jalen Brunson, Mikel Bridges, Phil Booth, Dante DiVincenzo. I think they're good enough to beat the West Virginia press and punish it, um, and so I think they take care of West Virginia fairly easy. Uh, and then I have Texas Tech uh, beating Purdue. Uh, setting up Villanova, Texas Tech. So we have our Elite Eight all set up. Arizona, Cincinnati, Xavier, Michigan, Kansas, Duke, and Villanova, Texas Tech. So moving on first to the Final Four is Arizona, one of the preseason top five. I believe they were top five preseason. They had their struggles. They had their scandal. Uh, and I think they I think they right the ship and make the Final Four as a four seed. Like I said, I think the winner of that North Carolina-Michigan game makes the Final Four. So I'll go ahead and take Michigan. Um, there is one thing with Michigan is they are a lot of live by the three, die by the three. Um, same with a lot of these schools, I guess, or live by the three, die by the three. Kansas is a little live by the three, die by the three. Um, 
Villanova is definitely a live by the three, die by the three. They have gotten a lot better about nailing it inside, but they they have done a lot of uh, living and dying by the three pointer. So moving on to the second two Final Four teams. I do love Texas Tech. I really do, and I really wish they were in a different bracket because I would probably have them in the Final Four. But facing Villanova, I think Villanova's guards get it done um, and uh, and advance to the Final Four. This is kind of like the no, not the no-name Villanova squad, but this is kind of the less... I, I'm, I mean, if you stack the squad up just by name value against like the Josh Hart teams or the Ryan Archie Diacono teams with like Darren Hilliard on them... Um, you would think that this is probably the worst of them all, but I I, I think the depth and I think the hustle plays of uh, Pascal and Spellman uh, kind of give them their own, this is kind of like their own designed Villanova team. It's not as chalked up as the other ones. It was pretty much five, four wing players and a big. Now it's like five wing players and a big that plays as a wing because Pascal plays kind of wingy more than he plays big man. Uh, and so one final team to get there, and I have Duke making the final four. So that sets up our two final four matchups, Villanova, Duke, Arizona, Michigan. So we got a one, two, three, and a four seed. And so my first team into the national championship is Alonzo, Trier, DeAndre Ayton, and Arizona. And so this is just purely, um, I don't know, I'm a Villanova fan, but I, I do actually think this team is a lot better than... Um, not only are they given credit for, but um, then they look on paper. I think they have a lot of maturity. Um, they have guys that can go get buckets for them. Um, I, I'm interested to see how they would match up with Marvin Bagley. That's kind of a really tough matchup. I think I think you would just have to, as Jay Wright, let Marvin Bagley get his, let him get 35 and 18 and, and stop everybody else. It would be a really tough matchup for Villanova. But if you look on paper, that matchup against North Carolina, their matchup against Oklahoma, their matchup against Kansas in these past tournaments have all kind of, if you looked at them on paper, favored the other team. Um, but they were able to get it done. So I'm going to take Villanova to face Arizona in the national championship, um, where I think, once again, I'd be interested to see how they would match up with DeAndre Ayton. Um, and so I think they get it done. Like I said, just the initial picks, um, mostly just talking Final Four. It uh, gets a little, like I said, it could easily be North Carolina here, and then it's kind of dicey whether I pick Arizona or North Carolina. But I, I like the initial score here. I think we get like a high-scoring, maybe 82 to 77 type national championship. But guys, that's going to do it. That's the initial look. Like I said, I'll have more of these to come during the week, all the way leading up till Thursday. Um, Thursday's tip at noon, maybe even some. They're released during those games, uh, but I'll try to have plenty of these out in the coming days. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Drop the video, like if you did, subscribe if you haven't, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.